This, this, this is Hamilton Tiger Cats football on the Tiger Cats Audio Network. Game three of the season for the Hamilton Tiger Cats uh, against the Montreal Alouettes in Montreal at Percival Molson Memorial Stadium. The Alouettes are one and one. The Tiger Cats still looking for that first win of the season. The only team left in the CFL looking for that first victory. I'm R.J. Bryden along with Luke Tasker, and we are back and looking forward to this game. The schedule will get better now for the Tiger Cats after this game. It's tough to start three in a row on the road. Couple of home openers in there, and Luke, you've played in Montreal a lot. It's tight confines in the stadium. It's a good crowd. This is a good football team. This is another tough game for the Tiger Cats. Yeah, it is. There's no way around it. It's not easy to go into Montreal ever and win. The great city, it's a great setting for football. It's a historic CFL city, but the stadium is tough. It's cramped. Uh, they're going to have a good crowd there with a uh, home opener and a team that's playing pretty well. Not an easy matchup at all. Uh, yeah, the season's going to get a little easier going forward, but the bye week that the Ticats find themselves coming out of right now is very timely. We've been talking about it on the Ticats Audio Network all week. Really a good time for uh, for a week of rest there for the Ticats. This is going to be a, a really, really great matchup and what could be a great catalyst to, to what would turn out to be a great season. The Alouettes, though, they're playing pretty good right now. Well, they're about an inch away from being 2-0. Yeah. Calgary just stopped them on the final play. If there was any more time on the clock, they might have won that football game. So, And they had a big lead against the Stampeders that Calgary was able to come back. So Montreal very easily could have been 2-0. and It's a big difference being 1-1, one and one, and it's the same boat for the Tiger Cats. They get the win tonight. And all of a sudden, they're right back in the mix in the East Division, tied with pretty much everybody else except Toronto with the one victory. And some lineup changes, too. I guess we have to start at quarterback. Dane Evans, of course. he's in. You uh, know Dane Evans well. Uh, a teammate in, in 2019, he was great. 9-3 and three record, and now it's his team. It's his team to try to get that first victory. Yeah. Uh, not a young guy taking over, right? Not somebody without, without uh, real, uh, somebody who hasn't been tested on the field. Dane played really, really high level football in 2019, including obviously a, uh, a chance at the Grey Cup. So I think, I think we're we're going to be able to to get past some of those young quarterback jitters. I think we're going to see some great play from Dane tonight in the uh, Task and Two show earlier this week. One of the things that we talked about specific to Dane is he 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 really does a great job of not stringing mistakes together and for a team that's struggling a team that's trying to win it's not about keeping playing mistake free football there are going to be mistakes there are going to be even turnovers tonight potentially it's about it's about when that happens when adversity hits in the game to then turn the page to get back on track and right the ship immediately after i'm really really hoping that we can see some just very consistent play out of dane early on tonight the offensive line and protection for the quarterback in the running game was a, a big focus for the team. Also, uh, turnovers, limiting those, big focus during the bye week. So, at left tackle, it's Kay Okafor, Brandon Revenberg, he's at left guard, Darius Saranko. Teammates were raving about how hard he's been working and in the, in the meetings and, and just trying to get better and over-communicating, some of the players were saying. John Yarbrough will be at right guard. Jordan Murray playing in his first CFL game at right tackle, 6'9", 325. So the Tiger Cats are getting some size on that offensive line. Position that I'm really interested in is Stephen Dunbar Jr. playing in his first CFL game. He'll be at wide receiver, but in the spot that Jalen Acklin's usually at, and Acklin's had a great year so far, but he moves to the slot. How different will yeah. that be for Acklin going from wide receiver to slot back? You know, I think the reason for that move is that I think Acklin has some trust with that staff. The uh, I, I, in my in my mind, Tommy Condell has Acklin as a guy who mentally, conceptually, can play that other position, that that complementary position that is the W, that 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 boundary side slot to the X receiver. So, it, it, 
certainly there's a different thought process for that position. There's a little bit of a different responsibility. And there's also some nuance that comes with playing in the slot that is uh, unique to those outside receivers. So you put a guy like Steve Dunbar, who's a first-year CFL player, that's a mo that's going to be a more familiar position with that for that guy every time he can start in his wide receiver stance that he's been doing since he was in middle school right yeah you don't have to time up a waggle you can be you can be st in place for for the majority of plays watching the ball get snapped and sort of see the see your your isolated side of the field Acklin you know still young I mean he only he, he's a second year CFL guy second year with the team but I can attest playing with him last year. He was a guy who was hungry to 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 be a master of the of the CFL conceptual uh, offensive game. And I think in this case, I think he's an easy choice to say, you know what? He's he's old enough now. He's trusted enough to give him that 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 sort of pure Canadian like responsibility of the slot receiver. Uh, while while allowing him to complement his true position, which is the X uh, there, very excited to see what the uh, what the Hamilton passing offense looks like tonight. It is a different wide receiver lineup than we saw in the early part of the season. Um, Tim White also in his first game, uh, first first uh, uh, play there with with the with Speedy B to the field side slot. Um, we'll see. I hope that we can have some complimentary football uh, running and passing. Uh, and, and I'm excited to watch Dane try to get this thing moving around. Yeah, it'll be a big key. Jalen Acklin, leading receiver among those who have played just two games. Michael Damagala will be the kicker. So his first CFL game played at Carleton. They called him Iron Leg. So we'll see if he gets some opportunity for <laughs> nice. some field goals. And then on the defensive side, Jagera Davis not in the lineup. Malik Carney, who did have a sack against Saskatchewan, will play on defensive end getting some health in the secondary with Kariel Brooks and Tunde Adelike back and that should help in pass coverage absolutely Tunde uh, Adelike was uh, I mean when he came to Hamilton after after two years out west he was sort of uh, seen as one of those uh, ratio breakers guys who who you know truly you know, play like play like a lot of these American uh, guys coming out of NFL camps, coming out of these big Division One schools, and he really does have an impact on the field. Has a great that natural free safety ability to see things moving underneath him, and then speed and physical gifts that allow him to to take away space, take away uh, take advantage of ball time down the field. Excited to see him back in the lineup and hoping that he, that that maintains that injury free uh, as we go through the night. Almost set to get going. It's a beautiful evening in Montreal, about 22 degrees, light wind at 13 kilometers an hour, and not much humidity. So a near-perfect night for football. Beautiful Montreal at Percival Molson Memorial Stadium, of course, where McGill plays. McGill is the logo at center field. And the Tiger Cats are going to receive to begin this football game as they search for that first victory of the year so we will get to see Dane Evans run the offense very shortly the Montreal Alouettes one and one their kicker David Cote in his first season with the Montreal Alouettes so a lot of young kickers in the CFL this year Frankie Williams has returned every kickoff and every punt so far this season for the Tiger Cats. And the kick is caught by Williams just outside his 10, going straight up the middle of the field, dodging a couple of tackles. This is big. He's up to midfield and all the way to the Montreal 50. That is a huge start to the game all for right. the Hamilton Tiger Cats. <laughs> Week one, RJ, we were talking, it's it's part of the special team's DNA with the Ticats. Give the offense the ball across the center field at least once a half. That's that's just about the quickest way <laughs> you can get it done. Now it's a 50, they're playing an arena league now. Now you first drive of the night, you get to only, you only have 50 yards to go to get points on the board. Great feeling here as you approach the, the ball for the offense on for the Ticats. Much different starting spot for the Tiger Cats and Saranko's snap was up high. Evans had to jump to get it but it all worked out pretty well. He got the handoff to Sean Thomas Erlington who looks like he got about eight. He'll be close to the first down. 
great run there. Little little run pass option. They had a wide receiver screen set up to the wide side of the field, which was Dane Evans left. Sean Thomas Erlington got the ball instead, <clears throat> taking on an outside run to the right. Great pickup on first down. Sean Thomas Erlington's got to feel good. It's home, home city. Nice little seven yard run right off the bat. Second and three from the Montreal 43. First drive for the Tiger Cats. Dane Evans taps his foot, gets the snap in the shotgun, looks left, throws up the middle, and hits his receiver wide open. It's Stephen Dunbar Jr. for the first down, his first CFL catch. And welcome to the CFL, Stephen Dunbar Jr. What a great call. Get the, get the ball in the hands of a young player early in the night. Get, get a little jitters taken care of. They got a quick huddle break here, and we're back to it. They, great tempo right now by the Ticats offense. Early in this game, offense looking strong under the direction of Dane Evans is hmm. going to the uh, left side, the far side, trying to connect with Jalen Ackland, and it goes incomplete, just out of the reach ahead of Ackland. Zone blitz there from Montreal. They brought five, dropped seven into coverage. It, it was absolutely the right read. They had Jalen Ackland open with a little Oscar route to the wide side of the, of the field, which is Dane's left. Just a missed throw, but it's tough. He's got five guys coming, and he, did, and he needed to get that ball off. Huge second down here. On the Montreal 30. Four receivers to the left of Dane Evans. He looks right. He's going deep. It's Dunbar Jr. Has he made that catch? <laughs> a one-handed catch oh, for a man. touchdown. Stephen Dunbar Jr. Touchdown, Tiger Cats. Wow. What a throw and catch. Can you imagine a better start to this game? That is fantastic. <laughs> Just like they drew it up. Wow, and we're taking another look at it. Very, very impressive. Keeps his leverage on the defender, Dunbar does, and he maintains space to, his, to the sidelines to make the catch over his shoulder. Keeps his feet in bounds. Man, that is exciting to see. An amazing start for the Tiger Cats. Very similar to how they started the season, scoring on their first drive, and now getting Michael Damagala into the football game, and his first kick didn't take him long to get into the CFL and get his first CFL point. The convert is good. It's 7-0 for the Tiger Cats. It's a great start. You're listening to Hamilton Tiger Cats football across the Tiger Cats audio network. Dream start for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Four plays, 50 yards. All started with that Frankie Williams return on the kickoff, and then Dane Evans got the offense clicking, and Stephen Dunbar Jr. looks like he's going to be a nice fit for the Tiger Cats. Michael Demagala kicking off to the Alouettes. It's a low bouncing kick that winds up going just inside the 15, and that's going to be Good field position for the Hamilton defense to start against Montreal. We'll see. This actually might get flagged here. That ball got kicked, get rolled out of bounds at the last second. Hamilton number 16. Montreal elects to take the ball at the 45-yard line. It will be first down. Okay. Saw Demogola running off the field. And that's why Montreal declines the penalty, so they'll start at their own 45. So yeah. pretty good field position they will start with. And the Tiger Cats defense has been put in some tough situations in the opening two games. This will be big to try to get a stop right after the Tiger Cats open this game with that touchdown. Dane Evans to Stephen Dunbar Jr. Here's the handoff to William Stanback. We'll see a lot of him, second leading rusher in the CFL. This one, he went right up the middle, and the Tiger Cats did not give him much, maybe a yard, maybe two. If you can keep an offense in second and eight throughout, throughout a night, that, that's, that is strong defense. That's all you need to do. They, I, I, don't, I don't care how good Vernon Adams is playing uh, right now, second and eight is just too tough to do time and time again throughout the, throughout the game as it progresses. So now we're on their own 47, the Alouettes, second and eight. Vernon Adams, Jr. He's gone deep a lot this year, not going deep this time. The pass a little bit behind Stanback, and he couldn't hang on to it. it. 
Got him in the hands as he reached back, but he couldn't haul the pass in, and that is a quick two and out for Montreal. The Ticats defense is letting him know it, too. They're saying, all night, man. That, that, that was a nice little two and out there to start off the defensive game. And so far, it's been impressive complimentary football. We've seen, a, with the exception of the, of the penal, penalized kick out of bounds, we've seen some really, really top-notch play uh, special teams, defense, and offense. And that didn't come back to hunt the Tiger Cats at all. So back to punt is Joseph Zima. Fourth in the CFL with an average of 46.9 yards per punt. Frankie Williams, as usual, back to get it. He's got to come way in to field this punt. Takes it at his own 20, and he'll be forced out of bounds on the near side, right near the 35. Great job fielding that punt clean out of the air. It was kind of a... a Miss, miss kicked or went off the side of his foot a little bit. Nature seemed like foul. it seemed like a strange. Unnecessary roughness. Oh. Montreal 83. 15 yard penalty enforced from the end of the run and a first down. Yeah, I just got another look at it. Uh, 83 for the Alouettes. Frankie Williams was a good five yards out of bounds before he got shoved uh, pretty firmly out to the out to the track here in Montreal. That's huge. Another another great play by the by the uh, Hamilton special teams unit. So here comes the offense again for the Tiger Cats. Dane Evans. He's got three receivers to his left. Sean Thomas Erlington tried to play action and it didn't work. Didn't fool Montreal at all. And Woody Barron is right there for the quarterback sack and it's a loss of about four. You're right. That didn't that didn't fool him at all. Barron was across. Barron was right into Dane Evans grill pretty much directly off the snap he came right up the middle right up the middle uh, looks like Darius Sirocco no excuse me looks like our right right tackle for Hamilton Yarborough maybe even a mental error there didn't look exactly like a, a, a clean protection so now second and 14 from the Tiger Cats own 45 lots of motion to the left of Dane Evans he's gonna keep this Going right up the middle, there's some space, but he's not going to be near the first down. Got it to almost midfield. He needed to get it out to the 51 of Montreal. He did not do it, so now the Tiger Cats will have to punt. Good run there. Third, second and 15 is no, uh, no easy uh, pill to swallow, but to get a little bit of the, that back, you're now, you know, that play is still valuable for the field position battle as the night progresses, and this is a good chance to flip the field for the Ticats. Joel Whitford, he's averaging almost 45 yards per punt. It's a good one. Pushing Mario Alford back to almost his own 10, and he's able to get it just shy of the 20. Looks like they'll spot it at around the 19. Welcome back to Montreal. Tiger Cats leading the Alouettes seven to nothing. Alouettes getting set for their second drive of the game. Vernon Adams Jr. takes the snap, throws to his right, and it's Eugene Lewis, who was the Alouettes' leading receiver last season in 2019, and that's a quick completion. Yeah, not surprising there either. That's a good play call there by the Alouettes. You get that two and out to start a game, you throw a hitch, next play, get get the ball in somebody's hands down the field a little bit, and that was a pretty nice gain of it looks like about eight or so on that play. Short yardage team out for Montreal, and Vernon Adams Jr. is going to keep it, and it looks like he will have enough for the first down. Although the Tiger Cats are saying they stopped him, so this spot will be interesting. Santos Knox is giving a convincing <laughs> argument against it. It looks like they might measure it. Well, that would make things interesting. That looked. Nope, they're not measuring. It is a first down. And the Tiger Cats, they're not happy. They thought they had the stop. It was stout, though. I mean, that was it was second and one, and you know we have the CFL a yard between the defensive and offensive lines. That was that was a close call there for the one yard gain. So first down for the Alouettes from their own 29 yard line. Just under eight and a half minutes to go. First quarter. Alouettes trailing seven to nothing. Another throw to that right side, and it looks Great like coverage. it's Lewis. Again, who makes the catch, but he was tackled right away, and there is a flag. 
Jamal Roy was all over that. that it, it looked to me like he broke that up. There is a flag. I want to see what this is all about because that was Upside, tight coverage. Hamilton number 97, five yard penalty, still first down. So the replay the down, but if Jamal if Jamal really is in coverage like that all night, it's going to be tough for Vernon Adams to put a, to put a ball in there like that time time after again. That was a great great defensive play. Ted Laurent offside. First and five. Here's Stanback runs into a pile of Tiger Cats, and they're not going to let him get very far. So far, William Stanback, who's had a great year for Montreal, has been held to not much in his touches. A lot of moving pieces and a long bye week of changes and fixes, but you gotta say it, it, it's looking like Ted Laurent is making a difference up front right now. Vernon Adams Jr. calling the play, waving his hands, throws his arms back, gets the snap. Looking right up the middle the whole time, and it's knocked away. Looked like Siante Evans got in there to get a hand on it and break up the pass that was intended for Quan Bray. Some kind of very aggressive defense that the Ticats played there. It was there was a lot of moving people in the in the defensive secondary. Tunde Adeleki came running down to the weak side of the field after the snap. This is great, great coverage by Evans here forcing Alouettes to punt again. So back to punt. The Alouettes, Joseph Zima. Fielded at about his own 30. It's Frankie Williams, and it looks like he might have another good gain here. He gets he to the far side, looking for an opening. He's Zima down. can't get him. Frankie Williams, the 30, the 20. Oh. oh, and he's tackled just inside the 15. Maybe got down to... The 12, but another amazing return for Frankie Williams. That was great. That was a great tackle there by 83 for the Alouettes. My goodness, Regis Cabasu, that was impressive. Frankie's kind of getting up a little slow, too. Frankie Williams, we hope he's okay. It's another great return. 7 nothing Tiger Cats. You're listening to Hamilton Tiger Cats football across the Tiger Cats audio now. Tiger Cats, great field position again, thanks to Frankie Williams, who miraculously was tackled, looked like he was going to be gone. So on the Montreal 14 is where the Tiger Cats start, and it's handed to Wes Hills. His first CFL game is big, powerful. Six foot one, 218 pounds, and takes it up the middle for about three or four on first down. It's going to be hard to tackle him coming up the middle like that. That was a great run. Handed off again to Hills. This time, the uh, Montreal Alouettes were ready for it. That was a no huddle. It was quick. And Hills stopped right at the line of scrimmage. So now down at the five, it'll be second, third down, and one. Third and one. So this is a big, big play. Tiger Cats, Dane Evans still out there. Got to expect. Yeah, he's oh, coming yeah. off now, I guess. Maybe too early to wow. take the chance. It's hard to tell from where we are what this one yard, if it's a true one yard or not, but I am surprised at the call here. So Michael Damagala will come on for his first CFL field goal. Not a long one from about the 13, and he hits it. So that's the first field goal of the year for the Hamilton Tiger Cats, and the points just keep coming. It's now 10 nothing. Tiger Cats leading the Alouettes. It's Hamilton Tiger Cats football across the Tiger Cats audio network. Montreal Alouettes with the ball and are starting to move upfield. Vernon Adams Jr. found B.J. Cunningham right near midfield. So the Alouettes trying to answer. They are trailing 10-0. It's a good start for the Tiger Cats. Now the defense has to come up big against the Alouettes who look inspired. That one just out of the reach of Cunningham this time. He got some hands on it, but it was just a little too far out in front of him. 
Ted Laurent deep into the back, deep into the uh, Alouette's backfield there, putting a little pressure on it. Vernon Adams had to really zip that ball in a little too hard for that, for such a short pass. Kahari Jones, head coach of the Montreal Alouettes, had a nice chat before the game with Orlando Steinauer at midfield. They would have went head to head a few times in their oh, yeah. playing careers. So third and three again, Montreal. They got up to nearly midfield this time. It's Speedy B back to return this punt right now. So Frankie Williams looked like he limped off the field. It'll be the first player other than Williams to return a punt. And here's Brandon Banks. Not much room to work, but he dodges through a couple of alouettes. And along the far side, he was pretty close to the sideline. And finally, the alouettes forced him out after a gain of about seven or eight. Classic speedy return there, getting five out of nothing. <laughs> So getting late in the first quarter, what a great start for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. First time this season in four weeks, now three games that they've hit double digits in offense, and we're still early in the yeah. football game. Yeah, that's great. It is just so great to see them come out like this tonight. Timely, timely bye week. One of the things we talked about during our Ticats audio network content throughout the week was what would improve the most with a, with a bye. And I did think that the special teams, I, I always found that there's something about uh, about a, an extra an extra couple days, if it's even if not a bye week, a long week where the special teams has has a chance to finally get a little extra meeting time, a little extra on the field time. We used to do, you know, you get some some individual drills mixed in there throughout the throughout that extra uh, week of prep. And so far tonight, the return game has been unbelievable for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Unfortunately, Frankie Williams, it looks like is. Uh, we don't have too much information on it yet, but he's uh, unable to field that last return. Of course, when Frankie Williams is down, you have maybe one of the most famous return men in the history of the CFL that goes in <laughs> yeah. for him. So that's all right. But hope, hoping uh, hoping we see haven't seen the last of Frankie Williams tonight. Well, he was just terrific opening kickoff. He brought that into Montreal territory. Dane Evans then turned that into a touchdown, hooking up with Stephen Dunbar Jr. And a wonderful returned by Frankie Williams, 67 yards on a punt that Michael Damagala came in to get his first field goal, the first field goal of the year for the Tiger Cats. So the two Frankie Williams returns resulted in points. Tiger Cats starting from their own 16 this time. Little different starting position. Dane Evans, motion to his right, play action. And he'll throw up the middle. It's complete again to Stephen Dunbar Jr., who's having a very strong first CFL game. Another oh, yeah. big game. Yeah, he's feeling it too. That's great. Getting the young guy the ball early for the touchdown and now a deep crossing route. Great play call. Nico Kalinich stepping in for a nice block, giving Dane Evans a little more time in the pocket. Now Tiger Cats up to their own 35. Speedy B gets the handoff and he high steps over an Alouette. He's past midfield and the Tiger Cats continue to move the chains. Another huge gain here on first down. That was incredibly well timed. I don't, I don't know about you. They they got me a little bit on that fake. Uh, it looked like Sean Thomas Earlington was getting an outside run to the right. And Speedy B was 10 yards downfield already on what was a what was a speed handoff to Dane Evans left. Well, two plays, and the Tiger Cats, who started on their 14, find themselves at midfield, and even more as Sean Thomas Erlington gets the ball this time, and he'll be close to a first down. Sean Thomas Erlington does this thing. He's, he just took that ball up the middle and put a foot in the ground where so many players are going to get tackled right on that spot. He, he kind of catapults himself forward. Do you see that? It's yeah. unbelievable. He does like this little somersault and he avoids the hit and it's three, four extra yards. It's just fantastic. I mean, that's going to put the Ticats in second and, I don't know, four or something like that. Great run there by Erlington. They're in Montreal territory just over midfield on the Montreal 48. Second and four. Dane Evans, lone man in the backfield and the pass might have been tipped. I think it was. And it's incomplete. Better protection there. Dane was Dane was able to sit in the pocket. I don't know if it got batted down. It looked like it did, but he did have some space to, to put his feet in the ground and make a hard throw. And unfortunately, they're gonna have to take the, 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 the offense off and get the punt team out. Tiger Cats did move the ball past midfield after starting deep in their own zone. 
So the field position, if nothing else, is a win for the Tiger Cats. Joel Whitford back to punt. Two returners deep. Whitford sends this high in the air over near the far sideline, and that'll be out of bounds at the 19 of Montreal. Okay, bounced in bounds first. It looked like they're arguing about it. It was very, very close to landing out of bounds. Out of bounds. Oh, there you go. That's two illegal kicks for the Ticats. Yeah. That's not great. I, I would love to get a look at Jeff Reinbold's face right now, but I can, <laughs> I've seen it a million times. I can, it's scarred into my memory, but that's not ideal. That's not, that's, it, it's sort of a, uh, nobody, nobody has one job, but that's sort of one of those, you got one job kind of things. And that was, uh, they are kicking across the field. On the 19 yard line, there's no infraction. Oh. oh. So they're saying that the ball did land in bounds at the 19. So okay, very good. That penalty is gone, and Jeff Reinbold <laughs> not as angry. <laughs> well, <laughs> not as. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Well, that's good. That was a good punt in that case. It bounced just just on the on the hash strips going out of bounds. So Montreal starting in their own zone. Vernon Adams oh. Jr. under pressure spins away. And he gets that ball loose, and diving for it was Eugene Lewis. He couldn't come up with it, but for Montreal, the main thing is Adams Jr. got rid of that football. It would have been Hamilton a big loss. Number 93, yeah. a 15 yard penalty. Oh, wow. What's and a first down. Malik Carney. I didn't see a flag. Roughing the passer. Okay. We didn't get the call uh, cleanly there, but it's 15 yards, and that hurts. Great pressure by the Ticats defense here, and actually an unbelievable, unbelievable move by Vernon Adams Jr. That was a very, very athletic move and a really, really bad decision there by Carney for the Ticats. Ball handed off to Williams Standback, and the Tiger Cats defense has done their homework on Standback. There was nothing for him. He might have got it back to the line of scrimmage. Really great run stop so far this game. It, that, that, that penalty is kind of glaring right now on the Ticats' first quarter. That, that is by far the, the most costly mistake. We had, they had the Alouettes at a second and 10 back at their own 19 as opposed to a first down on their own 35. We'll see if they can get him off the field and avoid this position, field position that they've been winning all game from flipping after this drive. Vernon Adams Jr. steps back. He's got lots of time, stays in the pocket. Now the pressure, but he eludes that too. More pressure coming, and he finds Stanback. It was a low pass. He couldn't make the catch. He was right at the 45, which might have been enough for a first down, but he could not haul in that low pass. Sianti Evans got a nice shot on Vernon Adams there. Uh, clean, you know, just, just, sec just a split second after Vernon Adams got the ball out of his hand. But man, you, you see him in the pocket moving around like that. That is, he is, he is very, very impressive keeping a play alive. You mentioned earlier this week, he is leading the league in explosive pass plays, and you can see why. Tiger Cats defense not letting Montreal pass midfield again, so Joseph Zima out to punt. And it's Brandon Banks. There was a flag on the play, he was trying to Run to the near side. He couldn't elude the special teams tacklers of the Alouettes. That's the end of the first quarter, but there is a flag on the play. So we'll have to see. It was right near where Speedy B caught that punt. I'm going to guess this is a... <laughs> I have this bad feeling in me that it's against the Ticats. I, it's such a terrible feeling to take the field as a receiver after a penalty on the return game, but it's hard to say what's going on. That was a, it was a little bit later than I would expect for a block in the back, but I certainly didn't see anything egregious uh, down on the field. I'm, I'm not exactly sure what this is going to be. During the return, holding Hamilton number 38, a 10-yard penalty, and one more play. So there will be one more play before the end of the first quarter. It was Felix Garand Gauthier who got the holding what penalty. Is he and for? 
We can see Orlando Steinauer is not happy that that was called. We haven't had a, another look at the penalty. Yeah, Ryan Bolton Steinhauer are not happy, and I, I, I certainly didn't see anything either. Did, that call did surprise me. So last play of the first quarter, Dane Evans, ball on the Hamilton 20. He's back to pass, throwing to the near side, and just out of the reach of Jalen Acklin. He was overthrown by Dane Evans. It's a good first quarter for the Hamilton Tiger Cats, leading Montreal 10-0. You're listening to Hamilton Tiger Cats football across the Thai Catch Audio Network. Back in Montreal, start of the second quarter, and Montreal able to get a quick stop as Dane Evans went back to pass. The pressure was on, and it was a quarterback sack. So now the Tiger Cats are going to be forced to punt. That was a two-man rush Montreal brought. Just some confusion in the protection there is all. And punting from his own end zone, Joel Whitford gets it up to about the 45-46, and not much room for a Darius Pickett, but there is another flag. The flag's starting to accumulate. This is going to be another halo. Uh, this is going to be an infraction, five-yard infraction here on the Ticats, I think. They were coming in hot. It was not the deepest kick, but that is tough to kick when you're standing in your own end zone. It really is. Looks like there's some disagreement on the call, though. And Miles Manalo is down for the Tiger Cats at his own yards. 41. Hamilton, so he's. Number 27. So it's uh, no yards on the Tiger Cats, and Montreal is marching closer to the Tiger Cats end. So they're. Still tending to Miles Manalo, but it's going to be great field position for Montreal to start their first drive of the second quarter. They'll be starting on their on the Hamilton 33-yard line. Yeah, the story of the first quarter was was the Ticats dominated the field position battle from the from the opening kickoff by Frankie Williams to the very end, and this is not the way that they wanted to start off this second quarter. This is a very, very short field drive for the Alouettes. Penalties accumulating on the Tiger Cats. They've taken four for 61 yards. Montreal two for 30 yards. Montreal had 18 penalties in their last game against Calgary. So they've played a little more to the rules tonight. Yeah, that's tough. And, you, and we've talked about this before and we'll point it out as we go on tonight, but every penalty has some form of hidden yardage in there as well. Not, not, not in this case right here with a with a no yards infraction, but you'll see the uh, on a re, on the return game especially. There's a lot. Uh, it's a huge, huge detriment when, when if you continue to get penalties in the kicking game. Miles Manalo being helped off the field. He's limping, but he is getting off under his own power he's got his arms around a couple of teammates it does appear Frankie Williams is in the defensive secondary right now he went down on a return earlier in the game a return he almost took to the Alouettes end zone Brandon Banks has been taking care of the return game responsibilities but I'm happy to see Frankie Williams uh, in the defensive secondary again he's the corner to the wide side of the field right now Vernon Adams right First four possessions for the Alouettes. They punted all four times. They are definitely within range to get points this time. Starting from the Hamilton 33. Play action. A complete pass up the middle to Eugene Lewis, and he's got it down to the Hamilton 10. Vernon Adams very, very calm in the pocket. We've seen him make some really athletic plays. At that this snap, he stood very, very quietly and made an absolute dart across the middle for a really nice gain. Definite points here for the Alouettes, short of a turnover. It is looking that way, Luke. It's first and 10. Empty backfield, three by three. Vernon Adams waves his arms. The waggle begins, the throw, and it. it's dropped. It's B.J. Cunningham. He was cut at about the three-yard line and couldn't hang on to the pass. 
the Alouettes had three receivers to each side, and the Ticats showed cover zero. Very, very common CFL coverage getting down here into the score zone. But two linebackers dropped out of the rush for the Ticats, and that happened to be the hot route that Vernon Adams threw. That, that drop is a result of Simone Lawrence running straight at your face while you're trying to catch <laughs> a, 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 quick, a quick bang route. Williams stand back behind Vernon Adams Jr. He does not hand it off. He passes instead. It's a touchdown for the Alouettes. Quan Bray open in the end zone, and the Alouettes on their first drive of the second quarter have a touchdown. Looks too easy sometimes when it's like that, and it's and, and it's really not. It's a great read by Vernon Adams. It's a three double cut from the Hamilton Tiger Cats, and that pass was really, really well timed, right on point between a low corner and the low wheel linebacker. Nice, what looked seemingly easy touchdown there for the Alouettes. Not much going offensively for the Alouettes, but. No yards penalty by the Tiger Cats put Montreal in great field position. They get the touchdown and David Cote out of Laval in his first year with the Alouettes gets the convert and it is now 10-7. Tiger Cats still leading early second quarter. Game on in Montreal. The Tiger Cats jumped out to a 10-0 lead, but early in the second quarter, the Alouettes score a touchdown. Vernon Adams Jr. to Quan Bray, and it's a 10-7 game. Tiger Cats could really use another big return off the kickoff here. That's what set them up in the opening quarter. Good field position, couple of Frankie Williams returns, and then he sat out the last couple because it looked like he might have been slightly banged up. And Frankie Williams is out there now, tried to Fake the reverse to Brandon Banks. Nobody fooled on Montreal, and he got it up to about his own 18, so it'll be tough field position to start for the Tiger Cats. Hard, hard to say if that's a uh, read that Frankie has the freedom to make or if it's a called, you know, misdirection. You can, I mean, uh, you know, no one knows except, except for the guys on the sidelines, right? You could call it either way. But <laughs> from up here, kind of looked like Speedy could have taken it around the, the other side if that had been a true uh, fake. Now, there wasn't much there for Frankie Williams. So the Tiger Cats, second quarter, trying to answer that Montreal touchdown on their own 19. Dane Evans, he'll pitch it back to Tim White, who was hit hard but kept on going, and he got it up to about the 25. First touch in a CFL game for Tim White, I believe. He did play against Saskatchewan. True, that's right. He had, he had a couple touches in the, in, the, in the tough loss against Sask, but uh, good to see him getting the ball here. For a, for a young guy to give him on a, a little run, get the ball in yeah. his hands easy and, and, and quick on a snap, it's, it's a, a good play call. And keeps the defense off balance. They've done it with Speedy B. They did it with Tim White. There's lots of options. Here's the snap. Dane Evans complete to Jalen Acklin. And that's his first catch of the game. He came in leading the Tiger Cats in receiving yards. Illegal and contact. that is illegal contact. The receiver, here. Montreal number 30. That penalty is declined. The result of the play is a first down. So decline the penalty, first down Tiger Cats. Nice throw and catch there. Jalen Acklin's been having a good season thus far for two very difficult first games for the team, but that is a Bang, bang, nice catch and way to secure the ball on a pretty hard tackle there. He's been reliable, great on second down. He was again there. He's playing the slot today. Dane Evans taps his foot. Here's the snap. Play action. Evans with time, running, and he tried to throw on the run, and it was knocked away by Montreal, and maybe thought that he should have had it was Monshadrick Hunter. He's holding his helmet as if he should have picked that pass off. He did not, it's incomplete, but there is another flag. Holding Hamilton, number 55, a 10-yard penalty, will repeat first down. Tough, they, we, gotta, we gotta put an end to the penalties if you're Hamilton right now. Very, very costly. Yeah, they're starting to add up and it's really putting the Tiger Cats in tough field position now on their own 28. 
first and 20. The thought process here as an offense is to get half. You're not trying to get 20 yards right now, but you do need to get half on this play. Here's the snap. Evans had time. That evaporated. He had to elude a tackle. He did, and he passed over to Dunbar Jr. It's a gain of a few. That was a low pass. I believe he caught it. Great job slipping away from that by Dane. It could have, could have easily been a loss of a loss of seven there. Made a little bit out of nothing. Hamilton's taken five penalties for 76 yards. Now second and 14. Hamilton on their own 34. Dane Evans looks like he may be calling an audible. Taps his foot. He's got Wes Hills to his right. He'll drop back. Looks. Up the Got middle, it. and it's complete. Stephen Dunbar Jr. has been reliable for the Tiger Major Cats. Foul. Roughing the passer. Oh, Marcus right. Donovan, 52, 15-yard penalty from the end of the play. First down. Well, you heard that. It's a roughing the passer, so that's going to move the ball even more for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Yeah, Maynard a little bit overexcited there as he came in at, uh, well after Dane had gotten rid of that ball. What a great play by Dunbar Jr. is having an unbelievable first CFL performance. Great chemistry with Dane Evans. Been there when he's needed him. He's scored a touchdown. Five receptions in the game for 88 yards for Stephen Dunbar Jr. The Tiger Cats may have found a good one here. First CFL game. Let's see who Dane Evans goes to this time. He's got four receivers to his right. Pressure coming from the Alouettes. Evans in trouble. And he will get it maybe just back to the line of scrimmage, but he just didn't have any time to work there. He, he took off pretty quick. It looked to me like that might have been a called quarterback draw. Hard to say, though. There was the, the Alouettes defensive rush was quick into the backfield, but... Dane was unable to get a great start on that. It, it, it tripped up. There were some bodies in his way, but it looked like it might have been a set draw. Tiger Cats on the Montreal 41. It is second and 10. Dane Evans looks around. Jackson Bennett, some quick words with him, and the running back will head off to the right. Pass goes to Jackson Bennett. It's complete. He stumbles, and he will only get a couple on the play. The Alouettes were able to converge on... Bennett and the Tiger Cats will have to punt. Bennett was out of the backfield like a wide receiver and they set up a screen to him on the field side just about hash. Really nice downfield blocking there by I think it was Jalen Acklin, maybe David Unger. Was set up nice. Jackson Bennett couldn't quite get his feet to get upfield. And it looks like they are going to go for a field goal. So Michael Damagala has hit from 13 yards. This one, a 46-yard field goal attempt. Nice and it's good. First CFL game is a good one for Michael Damagala. Another field goal for him. It's 13 to seven for the Tiger Cats. This is Hamilton Tiger Cats football across the Tiger Cats audio network. Tiger Cats, another field goal from Michael Domagala. And he has been terrific in his first CFL game. Couple of field goals. It's a 13-7 lead for the Tiger Cats. 13 points, double digits, everything going quite well for the Tiger Cats. They'll kick off here to the Alouettes. Montreal scored a touchdown on their first possession of the second quarter. Mario Alford, he's a dangerous returner. He's returned a punt for a touchdown already this season. I want to bounce at about the 21, and Alford heads back, runs into one of his blockers, and that allows the special teams of the Tiger Cats to get down there and make the tackle on Alford. It's Garan Gauthier again. Really good play by a young Canadian there. Sort of made the tackle 
while getting blocked at the same time. Sort of a sort of a uh, cluster of a play there, but not not terrible field position for the Alouettes here, but decent coverage by the Tie Cats coverage team. They'll start on their own 24 on the far hash mark. Vernon Adams Jr. Two receivers in motion to the left, and he's going to keep it. Fake the handoff to Williams Stanback, and that is going to be a gain of about seven for Adams Jr. Yeah, that's a great first down play. Qu little quarterback draw that was designed. He went right up, right up the middle, and he is slippery. It, it did not look, at least from our view, like there was really much to work for work with uh, for Vernon Adams as far as green space, but he, he, he slipped right through there for some extra yards. Ted Laurent coming back in, second and three. Montreal on their own 31. Under center this time is Adams Jr. He hands off to Stanback, and again, nothing there for William Stanback. The Tiger Cats have stopped him every time tonight. Everybody on the defensive front for the Tie Cats was in the backfield there. They have done an unbelievable job of stopping the run of Montreal tonight, and that had, that was an issue in the first two games, and a, and a big part of why they struggled. Ten rushing yards the whole night for Montreal. Really, really impressive way to turn it around on a bye week for the Hamilton defensive front. And to put that into perspective, William Stanback, second in the league in rushing through his first two games, averaging 97 yards per game. Just 10 rushing yards tonight They brought the Alouettes. They had three receivers out there that last play. They were saying, we're going to run the ball. They want their guy to get some yards, and, deep, and Hamilton's having nothing of it. Looked like they might have been doing a fake. Zima on the run, punts this ball. That's a penalty, yeah. It'll be fielded at uh, about the 34 and taken out of bounds. Not much room there, but... It looked like the Alouettes were close to Frankie Williams, and there is a yard penalty. Uh, penalty, and it is the no yards. First down Hamilton. So the Alouettes were a little too close. It was kind of an interesting punt with Joseph Zima yeah. started on the run and then didn't get much on the ball, and the Alouettes cover team was way downfield and got a little too close. I think we're seeing an increase of that sort of sort of quasi Aussie style punt in the CFL uh, he was rolling out to his right it almost looked like they maybe had a fake option in the setup there uh, ended up kicking it hard to say whether or not that was designed or not it's like a, it's like a like a kind of do what you want type of play I remember being a, you know when you're playing quarterback and punter and free safety when you're a kid and sometimes they just say hey if you if you can run it, run it, or if you have to punt it, punt it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if there's that much trust there <laughs> uh, in the in the Alouette special teams room, but uh, reasonably effective punt, though. He got rolled out to his right and, and, and able to pin it outside of the numbers. Unfortunately, for the Alouettes, they uh, well inside of the five yards, very close to Frankie Williams as he fielded that. Yeah, so the Tiger Cats will start from their own 49-yard line. Dane Evans, great start in his first start for the Tiger Cats. Seven for 10, 104 yards, a touchdown and zero interceptions. So Dane Evans has lived up to expectations and has taken off right where he left off in the 2019 regular season. Yeah, very, very nice first quarter. Good start here in, this, in the first half for Dane. And the best part, the best number that I that I like to hear in that stat line is the zero interceptions. I mean, it, 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 the, the Ticats have been hurting themselves in the penalty battle tonight, but in turnovers, they've kept the ball safe, secure. And Dane's done a good job of, of, of knowing when to force and when not to force. False starting, snap. Starting on their own 49, Dane Evans. Gets the snap, drops back a couple of steps. There's another flag, and Evans is down. And he's sacked for a loss, but we'll have to see what this flag is. I think it's on Speedy B, actually. I think it was Speedy to the field side. Offside. Hamilton, number 15. That penalty's declined. Second down. Good eyes. It would be 16. Yes, I he, believe they don't yes have a, he was held, but he made the tackle on the play, okay? <laughs> Got to turn his mic off there on the field. <laughs> yeah, that was speedy. I think he meant. I think it was supposed to be 16. They had a fake of that false motion, which is a great tool in the CFL, where you kind of 
fake that forward motion and stop prior to line of scrimmage and make the defense declare their coverage or their rush. But on that, on the second, on the actual, on the live snap is actually when Speedy crossed the line early. Second and 17, Hamilton on their own 42 from the near hash. Again, more pressure on Dane Evans. And again, he's brought down. Sacked by Mike Wakefield. And uh, Montreal Alouettes are starting to get some pressure on Dane Evans, and moving that ball hasn't been as easy as it was earlier in the game. No, that, there was really, really nothing to be done there. That, that happened very quickly to Dane. Got right to the end of his, of his back pedal and immediately had to take off. So back to receive the punt, Mario Alford and Darius Pickett. Joel Whitford standing on his own 27-yard line. Hunt will send Pickett back. Oh, he didn't catch the ball, and then Alford's right there. That ball was loose. Who's going to come up with this? It was a scramble. The Tiger Cats were down there, and now the battle for the football, but it's indicated it is Montreal's ball, so they got very lucky. That went right through the arms of Adarius Pickett. It did. It was great coverage by the Ticats. They had a, a, a few of their gunners downfield sitting at that five-yard halo mark, and it just enough to just enough to get to make the returner think a little bit. That ball slipped right through his hands. So that would have been a good break for the Tiger Cats if they had been able to get to the football. Montreal still maintains possession. Just over four minutes to go in the half. Tiger Cats lead the Alouettes 13 to seven. Best offensive game so far for the Tiger Cats and we're not even to halftime yet. Getting close to the three minute warning. Vernon Adams Jr. calls for the snap. Now he goes up to the line of scrimmage. He's calling an audible here. Didn't like something he saw with that Hamilton defense. Adams Jr. back to pass and there was some miscommunication because no receiver even close to that ball. It's incomplete. Ticats had a cover 12 there. So man coverage, free safety high, and two low players. They, that means they're rushing only three guys. So whatever Vernon Adams was thinking prior to, he, he, he called that off. And, and even with the three-man rush, that was not an easy pocket to throw out of for Vernon Adams. Great defensive coverage. Second and 10, Montreal on their own 26. In between the hash marks, middle of the field, Vernon Adams looking around again, motion to his left. Adams Jr. with time. Looking deep, there's a flag on the coverage, and Eugene Lewis caught the pass, but he was out of bounds. Seems like there's a flag on almost every play now, and it looked like it was in the vicinity of the route that Lewis was running. Yeah, it's either, it's either Lewis or Frankie Williams, I believe, who was in coverage there. One of them got too much jersey or a push off. It did look like a double move. Defensive I... pass interference. No. Hamilton number 26. The ball will be placed where the infraction occurred and it first down Montreal. Excuse me, Carriel Brooks was in coverage for the Ticats there. So that gives Montreal a first down. Now they're up to their own 48, getting close to midfield, getting close to the three-minute warning. Might be the last play before the three-minute warning, before halftime. Vernon Adams, Jr., he's cool back there, calmly waiting. Three receivers to his left, and he goes there. Chris, Jake Winicky, able to get a couple of yards, and he's been a clutch receiver for the Montreal Alouettes. Winicky had eight receptions last week, including four five on second down. That was an unbelievable play by Cianti Evans. Great tackle there. Three minute warning in Montreal. In Montreal late in the first half. Just out of the three minute warning. Montreal with the ball. Their own 49, Vernon Adams Jr. It's over midfield, a completed pass to B.J. Cunningham and that will be a first down for Montreal. Just inside the Hamilton 50. Nice throw there by Vernon Adams. Took his drop and just saw the, the drop down route sitting five yards over the ball. And you just take what you can get there. Hamilton was in zone coverage, bubble opened up over the middle. Great throw and catch. 
Big drive late in the first half. Hamilton with a 13 to seven lead. Vernon Adams Jr. again, he's got time. Throwing to his left and it's another completion just outside the 20. P.J. Cunningham, another catch on this drive, another first down. Carroll Brooks in coverage there kind of had his hands in the air at the end of the play, and I can see why. It really was not a great throw, not, didn't get beat necessarily by the receiver, but it was just placed such that he was the only guy who could catch it or really even get a good look on the ball. Not terrible coverage, well placed. 32 yards on that play. On the Hamilton 22, first and 10. Play action, and a short pass for Eugene Lewis, but Jamal Roll, good coverage, and he got a hand in to knock the pass away. Nice job there by Roll coming underneath that. The, the times that the ball has come to Jamal Roll tonight, he has been, I'm talking right there on the guy that he's covering. Very, very impressive, that boundary corner. That's, that's that position on the CFL defense that is sort of the lockdown guy. And man, he has been playing very, very well tonight. Two minutes, one second to go in the half. This is a big down. It's second and 10 on the Hamilton 22. Tiger Cats trying to hold Montreal to three. The pass is incomplete, intended for Jake Winicky. And the defense holds strong. And now the Alouettes will be forced to try a field goal with David Cote, the rookie kicker. Great stop. If you they're, they're in scoring territory, points are inevitable if you're an offense and it's, you're thinking we've got points at this time, but to hold them to three, it's huge. Great defensive play, by the, play by, there by the Ticats. David Cote, three for five this season. His long is 47. This will be a 29 yard field goal attempt. And Cote is good. So it's a close game late in the first half, 13 to 10. The Tiger Cats leading the Alouettes. Alouettes really had nothing going in the first quarter. Had the ball four times, had to punt four times. They've been much better in the second quarter, but better field position as well. Yep, you're right. They're win they're, I would give the Alouettes the win and field position for the second quarter here. Tiger Cats definitely had that advantage for the first quarter. The Ticats are playing good football ball right now, but I'll tell you what, it's eight penalties for 108 yards for the Ticats versus Montreal four penalties for 45 yards. I mean, that is an enormous swing. That's a whole dip, that's a whole drive extra of yardage that's been lost due to penalties. It, it, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta call it quits on that. That's a bad habit to, 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 to have, and you know it's gonna be addressed. Win or loss, that is gonna be addressed this coming week for the Ticats who are heading into the uh, to the storied Labor Day Classic, of course, after after tonight's game. Is there any tie into a bye week with the added penalties that have happened, uh, having that week off? You know, I would you would actually think the opposite. Yeah. You know, you'd have some time to sort of uh, hone in on some of the fundamentals. And the, now the teams aren't practicing in the bye week, so it's not, you know, it's not that you have so much extra time on the field, but um, you know, a little bit sharper is actually what I would have expected in the penalty game. And this is, uh, there's been a couple real costly times tonight. Montreal kicking off. Just under two minutes to go in the opening half. Frankie Williams has some blocking help ahead of him and he'll get to the 25, 26 yard line and the Alouettes are there and they seem to have figured out Frankie Williams in the second quarter. Yeah, it looked like it might have. It was ready to be a, a few electric returns tonight. We haven't seen it since the first quarter. Uh, in fact, since Frankie uh, got got took a little shot on that last long return of his, but you never know. We might see a little magic still tonight from the Ticats return t return game. Right now on their own 26, not not a terrible uh, drive start. So since the Hamilton touchdown that came on their opening drive, they punted four times, a couple of field goals from. Michael Dom Magala. Starting now from their own 27. Hand off to. Nice run. I think that was Wes Hills. Yep. The big running back in his first CFL game. And <laughs> he went into the meat of the defense and <laughs> let him know that he's here to throw some weight around on those runs. 
they had trips to the boundary side of Dane Evans there, and that third receiver was Nico Kalinich, the tight end, fullback, sort of uh, bigger body type, and he led that run, in, came in motion, and led that run around the right side. Really effective play there, great call. Hamilton on their own 35, second and two. And nothing doing. Tried the quick handoff to Speedy B. And the Alouettes were all over it. The defense celebrating. It is a loss for the Tiger Cats. And the Alouettes are going to get another chance here with the ball before the end of the half. Yeah, that sort of negates that uh, positive run play there. Heavy, heavy rush from the timeout. Alouettes Montreal. defensive front. Interesting, taking a timeout here before the before the return clock ticking down in the uh, second quarter here. So that'll give Montreal a little extra time. You'd have to think Tiger Cats would have run the clock as far as they could. Yeah. Yeah, that's tough. The If you're the Alouettes about to take the ball with just over a minute left in the, in the half, uh, you're going to have... I don't know, 70 yards to go probably. You get a great return, maybe you get 60 or, or, or half a field to go. Uh, you know, you got a minute to get into field goal territory. Really, really likely point scoring drive here if they can just avoid, avoid uh, tackles for loss and turnovers. Joel Whitford standing back on his own 15 to punt this football. It's a Short high point. kick, not a deep kick though. Oh, again, it hits the hands of Mario Alford, and it bounced on the ground, and he was able to get it back, but those returners from Montreal pick it last time, this time Alford not catching that ball clean and adding to a few anxious moments, but again, Montreal hangs onto the football. This might be another no yards infraction here. No yards mm. interference. Hamilton number 23. This is a 15-yard a penalty and a first down. Chris Frey Jr. And this is going to give Montreal great field position, so they're not going to have those 70 or 60 yards, Luke. Wow. They're going to have this on the Hamilton territory. 50, or, yeah, 50-yard 50 line of, the, of Hamilton they're about to start at. It looks like Orlando Steinauer has thrown the challenge flag. So I agree with this because that 15 yard penalty has to be has to be an egregious a zero a zero effort no yards penalty. And I, I don't I didn't I don't I don't I didn't see that on this play either. This should be a, this should be a lower yardage infraction if if it is at all a penalty I believe. It was a short kick, so that does it was make it difficult. Very for very difficult. The best, re the best returners, I remember Chad Owens would do this. The best returners can time that up where they're looking like they're comfortably going to field the catch and then they sprint forward two yards at the end to make that reception. <laughs> that is the hardest way to, the hardest return returner to cover, to, to be mindful of that. Hamilton is challenging the ruling on the field. They believe there was no, no yards on the play. The play will be reviewed. So they're going to look at this and this might be a big point in the football game too. Late in the first half, we're getting a another look at it. Oh, they're right. I think Coach O might have a reasonable challenge here. Yeah, it hits the hands of oh, yeah. Alford, and it looks like they're five yards back. It's very close. See, that's the hard part about this review, is because if you if the if they would have caught that live. I think that your instinct says, no, they're, they're, they are at that five yard halo, it's safe. In the replay, you know, you can so exactly measure that distance, you know, and, and if yes. it's four and three quarters of a yard, then maybe you still, maybe they still, uh, the, the penalty holds, but it, it, that looked like good coverage to me. I, I, I was surprised that the, there's another wider look at it. And what are you, what are you seeing with this, Luke? That's tough I, to call. It is tough. I, no I yards think, on that. <laughs> I think they could argue that the penalty stands. It's just what I'm saying. That's it's it. It looks to me like they are just tighter than five yards right there. It's it is a real unique thing to Canadian football, and it's so hard to, to be. It's such an aggressive thing to cover kicks, to cover punts, and to take that little bit off at the end to maintain that halo. It's very unique. And again, it's so costly. 
especially we have a minute 12 left in the game here. And if this penalty holds, the Alouettes are on the Hamilton 52 yard line. Yep. You could argue After that they have- After review by the command center, the receiver did touch the ball and there was nobody in the five yard zone. Therefore, there is no infraction. The ball will be placed on the 43 yard line and a first down for Montreal. Whew. Coach Hamilton o. will <laughs> keep their challenge. Nice. Coach O gets uh, first star of the first half with there that one. That, that changes things big time. Excellent challenge, yeah. So 15 yards difference. Montreal will now be on their own 43 yard line. Minute 12 to go in the half. Now they have about 25 yards to go before they're in reasonable field, field goal distance. Vernon Adams, three receivers to his left, and Kayon Julian Grant makes the catch at the sideline. And they will try to work this clock. Now there's a minute six to go, but he did get out of bounds. Bobbled it a little bit there. It looked, it looked like he almost, almost was gonna let that one touch the ground. It's hard, always hard to tell from, from our bird's eye view, but sometimes the lights in these stadiums, when you're out on the sidelines, that can get really, really difficult for a direct pass like that. And I wonder if he was dealing with the, with the Montreal lights a little bit there. Also didn't catch a pass last week, so maybe there was some thinking. Oh, a huge hit. Yeah, wow. Cameron Kelly immediately on B.J. Cunningham as he caught that pass, but Kelly, the linebacker, came in and made a huge hit. That was, we could hear that one cleanly. I don't know if the radio broadcast can pick up that sound, but it was clean. It was right on his thigh pads, and man, that, that hurts. I can tell you that hurts, and there's no way to avoid that as a wide receiver right after the catch from Vernon Adams out to the flat. Oh. We're getting another look at it. It's a great, great hard tackle by Kelly. Yeah, Cunningham didn't even have a chance to have an inkling that no, Kelly was there. Nothing. So a big hit, clock running, getting to 52, 51, 50 seconds. Montreal take as much time as they can before they punt this ball. Frankie Williams back. See if the Tiger Cats have time to make something happen late in the half. This is kicked. Near the sideline, it'll bounce down to the 10, inside the 10, and Frankie Williams trying to pick it up, and there is a flag. And that appears that it would be no yards. It, I do think so, which is a, that's kind of a silly mistake with the top for the Alouettes there. The Frankie Williams allowed the ball to sort of settle no and yards. roll around on Montreal the field. number three, five yard penalty, first down. Of course. I, so the Ticats get the ball on their own 15, but that ball probably hit the turf at the 20, I would say. Yes. So I don't know. I, if I'm Frankie Williams, I think I sprint up and try to get that in the air. And that is, of course, the most likely time for a no yards, uh, you know, to be added to on top of that. So here's the scenario. It looks like there's 30 seconds on the clock. Tiger Cats on their own 15. Not a lot of time to work. Tiger Cats leading 13 to 10. They have not led at the half this season. Dane Evans, hands off. It's Wes Hills again, and some hard running again by Hills into that Montreal secondary. Probably got about six on that play. Yeah, a good five or six yards in the in the first two games this season for the Tiger Cats. That was really something that was missing from from their offensive attack was just a, a five yard pop, a five yard pass, a five yard run up the middle. And tonight they've done a much, much better job at getting a little bit of a, of a, of a more comfortable second down situation. Saw Wes Hills at practice and he was just one of those guys seemed to stand out. Number 34 We've got was illegal block everywhere. On Hamilton number 84, oh blocking the load of weight. It's gonna be at the distance to the goal and oh. we're gonna repeat first down. So another penalty on Hamilton and Where's John Thomas 84? Erlington shrugging his shoulders. This is gonna march the Tiger Cats back. It's Nico Kalinich, he does not, he does not agree with this call. I don't, I, 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 was not, I didn't get a look at him on this play, but he disagrees with a block below the waist. You're not allowed to, you have to engage a defensive player above his belt line at, in, as if you're a blocker on a run or pass play. Nico was in the backfield at his regular tight end spot, mo waggling down the line. Just like that successful run play on the last drive, I think that he crossed the line of scrimmage. 
and he doesn't agree that he blocked below the waist, it looks. So about 25 seconds to go. Tiger Cats from their own five, just trying to run the ball, get a few yards. And it's West Hills, didn't get much, maybe one on that play. Now down to 20 seconds. And it's second and 15, Hamilton on their own 10. So this is late in the first half. Tiger Cats will run this clock down as far as they can and should be able to end it. Exactly. Yeah. It should be the end of the half. So deep in their own zone, they might not have to pay for this. And there's the snap. Evans will take a knee. And that's it for the first half. So for the first time, the Tiger Cats year, audio net. The Hamilton Tiger Cats lead at the half. It's 13 to 10. And they continue to talk about penalties with the referee. That's something the Tiger Cats will want to clean up in the second half. But it was a good first half. Most points the Tiger Cats have scored in a game, and they lead. Welcome back to Montreal. Beautiful night for football, and the Tiger Cats lead the Alouettes 13 to 10. First time Tiger Cats have hit double digits. First time they led at the half. A lot of good firsts in that first half, Luke. Yep, absolutely. It's a great way to start after what was uh, two really poor games for the Tiger Cats. But this entire football game that we have on hand still hangs in the balance. There, the, Anything can happen still. The, the Alouettes are going to get a chance to start on offense here for the third quarter. Tiger Cats looking a lot more efficient on offense, but they're, they've, it's only been six first downs for them so far in this game. It hasn't been an overly uh, impressive second second quarter. Uh, definitely dominated the field position at the start of the game, but a lot, lot resting on this uh, third quarter here. Michael Domagala kicking off. Mario Alford. Forced to the outside, not a lot of room to work on that far sideline, so good coverage by the Tiger Cats. He got it maybe to the 26 or 27 of Montreal. I think we've had a fairly split field position battle, but it was a story of two quarters in the first half. Tiger Cats jumped out to a 10-0 lead. Alouettes better in the second quarter. Put 10 points on the board. Domagala had a field goal. That's the difference. Couple of field goals. Tiger Cats hadn't had any in their first two games. So now Montreal going to work. And under center is Vernon Adams Jr. Not in the shotgun. Hands off to William Stanback. And you know Montreal would like to get that running game going. Stanback had just two yards rushing in the first half. That's hard to believe for the second leading rusher in the CFL. This one a little bit better. Looks like he got about seven. Ticats were not doing a great job in run defense coming into this game either. That was a great first half for the run defense. That was the second time we've seen a three receiver set from Montreal back in their own end. So. Uh, generally a short yardage uh, receiver package. And of course, both times uh, it's been a handoff straight up the middle, that time for a, a nice yard, a nice um, carry there. Wound up being an eight yard carry for Stanbeck. So second and two, Montreal on their own 34. Again, under center, Vernon Adams Jr. Hands off, Stanbeck, not much there that time. And this will be an interesting spot. The Tiger Cats. Didn't give him much, but it is enough for a first down. He just did get it. Same thing. Three receivers for Montreal, two to the field side of Vernon Adams, which was his right, one receiver to his left. Do you think they're setting up a play action later on in the game? Because I think so. <laughs> we'll I, see. I don't doubt you, Luke. <laughs> They've, th that's the same a unique CFL set, and they've ran the same play three times in a row. This one gets called short here. Yeah, they just snapped the ball, and it was stopped immediately. Likely procedure. We'll see. Illegal procedure. Montreal, number 51. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. So that'll push Montreal back five yards. Now be on their own 32. 
first and 15. Early second half, Hamilton Tiger Cats leading the Montreal Alouettes 13 to 10. Tiger Cats wearing all white tonight with black helmets, black numbers. The Alouettes in all blue with red trim, red socks. Vernon Adams Jr. play clock at four. Caps his foot, gets the snap, looks to his right, goes up the middle into coverage, and Eugene Lewis it hit him in the hands. He could not come up with it, and Siante Evans, a big reason why. Evans thinks he might have had a good chance to pick that off. Looks frustrated. Three double cut there, so three deep defenders for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. And if you're playing double cut, that means the corners are low to the outside of the field, a heavy underneath coverage and that was a crossing route thrown right into a defense that has a lot of low defenders there. Really, really dicey play. Now the Hamilton defense has a three down look now. Second and 15, wow. Adams Jr. in big trouble and he's brought down at his own 20. Jovan Santos knocks right there with the sack. And that's the first sack of the game for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Montreal's had four sacks on Dane Evans. Vernon Adams had his helmet off on the field for some, I don't know if that got, he got tangled up in the tackle there. Looked like he was arguing for some sort of flag, but it was all clean. Three down linemen for Hamilton, but they brought two extra for a five man rush. Great, great play, great call on a second and long. Julian Hauser was right there as well with the, with the sack. Santos, Knox, and Hauser put pressure on Vernon Adams Jr. And to start the second half, Montreal's going to have to punt. And Joseph Zima from inside his own 10. His punt, Frankie Williams waits for it. Eludes one tackle, another one. Now the first tackler was able to recover and get there and finally bring down Frankie Williams. That was Mark Antoine Decoy. Both, both return teams have shown a two-back uh, set on the field tonight. <clears throat> Frankie Williams getting the ball there. Back in Montreal, Tiger Cats starting from their own 40. Dane Evans, a pass. It was knocked down, and it goes incomplete. Taquan Glass, who is the leading tackler for the Montreal Alouettes coming into this game, was right in the face of Evans, the cornerback. Came in on the blitz and was able to knock that pass down. That was a great setup there. Nico Kalinic was tight against the line with his hand on the ground to the right. Hamilton had four receivers to the left, and he he gave one shove on the defensive end and ran a bang to the flat. It would have been an easy first down, I'm thinking, for Nico, but that was a really, really well played throw by the D end. From the 41. Three receivers to Dane Evans left. He's going to go up the middle. Oh, it's a big play. It's caught by Tim White. And he is inside the Montreal 30. What a huge play on second down by the Tiger Cats. Great explosive play. Quick after the, the start of the half. Second play of, of the third quarter. Beautiful throw. It was just a, just a seam route here from the slot on the boundary side. Well, Quick pass from Dane Evans to Brandon Banks, and it's off the arms of Banks and goes incomplete. He, Speedy's he's, he's saying kind of, I think he's saying that's kind of on me. It looked like it almost surprised him. And I think, again, I think that was the lights. I think that's what he's trying to say. He's kind of giving Dane Evans the look like, hey, that was, I bobbled that one. And I'm telling you, there's, there's those parts on the field, those angles where that's really difficult. And it looks, their depth perception of the throw is hard. Hamilton's on the Montreal 32. Second and 10. Dade Evans has Sean Thomas Erlington to his left. And he'll dump it off to Thomas Erlington, who runs into the offensive line. Looks like Brandon Revenberg ahead of him, and that allowed Montreal to corral him. Kind of nifty. They, they had just run a screen to Speedy B to the to the uh, boundary side of the field, Dane Evans right, which was an incomplete pass. They set up the exact same thing again, a screen to the boundary on Dane's right to Brandon Banks, and then gave the ball to Sean Thomas Erlington uh, on a screen to the left. It, it actually set up pretty well, but uh, really, really great defensive stop there by Montreal. 
this looks like it'll be about a 37, 38 yard attempt for Michael Domagala. He's hit two field goals tonight from 13 and 46 yards. And no. this one is wide left. Alford from his own end zone had a notion to run it out and he's going to go wide. He's going to bring it outside the end zone. He has a couple of blockers. He's up to the 20, now the 30. Alford up to the 40 in the 45 and he's finally brought down after the missed field goal. And Mario Alford is a dangerous returner. There is a flag down though. Unnecessary roughness, blindside block. Montreal number three. At the distance to the goal and a first down Montreal. Well, there's a lot going on in the field right now. We've got a few players down. So we've brought up the concept of hidden yardage. This is hidden yardage right here. Now, you could say that block made the play happen, but we'll see what happens after this break here. So Montreal pushed back after that penalty. We will sort it out for you. Hamilton leads 13 to 10. This is the Ticats Audio Network. We are definitely looking forward to that Labor Day game against the Toronto Argonauts home opener for the Tiger Cats. They'd love to come home with a one and two record for that game. They are leading early second half at Montreal, basically from their own goal line. Vernon Adams Jr. had to get away from a tackle, avoided giving up a safety and ran it to about his own 11. First down for Montreal after some good running from Vernon Adams Jr. Yeah, I'm thinking there's nobody they trust more with the ball in, in his hands in, standing in their own end zone than Vernon Adams. That was an impressive way to avoid what could have been a disastrous first down back in their own territory. Three receivers to the left of Vernon Adams. They're on their own nine. Adams throws to Jake Winicky, who will take that to the 18. And Montreal will move the chains. And Jake Winicky has really turned into a reliable receiver for Vernon Adams Jr. Great strike there. Zone coverage to the boundary, which was the trip side for Montreal. When you're backed up, standing in your own end zone, there is one thing that you're thinking about get one first down. You don't need to get points on that drive yet. You're not thinking that. You're not thinking about touchdowns, field goals. You're thinking one first down. That's a win right there for the Montreal offense. Three receivers on the near side for Montreal. Williams stand back right beside Vernon Adams Jr. and gets the handoff. He'll take it across the 20 up to the 22. Starting to see from Stanback a little bit more of what was the Montreal offense early in this season. First half, the Hamilton defense really held the run game to nil for, for Ottawa. And even the first two drives, they've shown a little bit more of that strong run game that they were showing earlier in the season. Second and six, Montreal on their own 22. Again, three receivers to the right of Vernon Adams Jr. near side of the field. Alouette's going left to right, and Adams Jr. going deep. Quan Bray can't come up with it. Great coverage by Frankie Williams. Knocked it away. Incomplete. Really great coverage, and great job of staying with the play by Frankie Williams. There was some separation for, between Bray and Frankie. He ran a really great double move, but the ball was just a little bit behind, and Frankie Williams got his eyes back to the football and got one hand up. Really, really savvy defensive play there. So Montreal will be punting again. That first down you talked about, Luke, really makes things easier for them. Standing on his own seven-yard line, Joseph Zima. Pretty good kick. Great kick. Sends Frankie Williams, or rather Brandon Banks, inside his own 40, and he was forced to the sideline and got it just across the 45, maybe to the 47. Tiger Cats, third straight road game, trying for their first win of the season. Six minutes, 19 seconds to go in the third quarter. Tiger Cats leading 13 to 10. They have the ball at their own 44. Dane Evans in at quarterback. 
orchestrated a touchdown in the opening drive of the game trying to get things going in the second half and a good run for Sean Thomas Erlington that will get the Tiger Cats almost to midfield and close to that first down great run great first down and good patience there by Erlington second and two almost at midfield very comfortable place to be beginning a drive here Dane Evans in the shotgun Stephen Dunbar Jr. in his first CFL game looked like there was some miscommunication. Didn't matter. The handoff went to Thomas Erlington, and he gets over midfield. It's a first down for the Tiger Cats. <laughs> it's funny that sometimes a run play for a wide receiver is the one that you kind of forget where you're supposed to be that time because <laughs> it wasn't exactly the one you were visualizing at the start of the game or the night before in the hotel, and it looks like the... Uh, young receiver for Hamilton there was a little confused uh, just on the line of scrimmage in the nick of time there. It all worked out. First down for the Tiger Cats. Couple of good runs from Sean Thomas Erlington. 82 yards rushing for the Tiger Cats in the game. Here's Evans passing this time and he's got Brandon Banks. It should be enough for another first down. It'll be close again depending on where they spot this ball. Tiger Cats are moving the football there in Montreal territory, and it is another first down on the Montreal 43. Love that route by Speedy. Little little 12 yard curl route right up the hash to the field side. And as a flat route, I think it was Erlington ran underneath him, the Sam gets pulled out. It's a perfect design, exactly what it is intended to do against the right defense. Four receivers to the right. Evans under pressure though, and he is brought down. It's take one, Glass, the quarterback who comes in to get the quarterback sack. Fifth sack of the game for the Alouettes. Fifth sack, unfortunately that story has not totally been turned around yet by the Tiger Cats. Still a struggle to get the quarterback a little bit of time and some breathing room. That was unique though, a corner blitz is sort of the wild card there, not exactly your standard protection uh, issue. In fact, that was actually Steve Dunbar, the wide receiver who was responsible for that corner blitz. Very, very difficult to pick that up. His first CFL game. Now it's second and 17. Hamilton's on the Montreal 50. Right on that McGill logo at midfield. Dane Evans throws to the sidelines. There's a flag. Dunbar Jr. made the reception right near the sideline, but we'll have to see what that flag is. It's got to be holding, it looks like, in the... In the offensive backfield I think they went empty there was no the the uh, Jackson Bennett was out of the backfield as a wide receiver three by three it looks like they're marching it backwards you don't have a call yet Holding yeah. Hamilton number 69 10-yard penalty still second down yeah you're right Luke that's the uh, big newcomer Jordan Murray 6'9 325 <laughs> pounds Yep, we Dane escaped out of the it. pocket there. So yeah, we're looking at it again, and that's so tough for a tackle. It, when the quarterback gets outside, you don't you don't recognize that because your back's to him. And when the defensive end changes directions, you know that is so easy to get a jersey pulled there. Well, not many plays for second and 27. Hamilton now pushed back to their own 50. Dane Evans drops back, looks, Throws it. and he's throwing it. It's caught by Tim White. And it'll be close to the original line of scrimmage. Yeah. <laughs> Are they within field goal range is the question. I, it looks like they're, well, we could hear Coach O's voice come, come, through our, come through the field mic. And he was yelling for the field goal. Here it comes. The field goal unit comes on. That is that. Uh, it's it's a little funny that we're only getting back to what was the the, yeah. the the you know the original drive start there, or excuse me, the the set of down start right there. But that's a huge play if they can make this field goal and get three points off of this drive that really had turned into something of a disaster. Well, this is going to be almost a 50-yarder for Michael Domagala. He's made two, missed one. And the miss went back 66 yards. This time, it's again wide to the left. Mario Alford, he's going to run this one back. He's up to the 10, got some blocking, and finally he's pinched off near the sideline, got up to about the 18-yard line. So Hamilton continues to lead Montreal here at 
Percival Molson Memorial Stadium, the home opener for the Montreal Alouettes. It's 13-10 for the Ticats. Montreal starting from their own 18. Last five possessions for Montreal, they've had to punt four times. They do have a field goal in that mix. The defense is starting to make it difficult on the offenses. Adams Jr. has some time and got a few yards before he was brought down. Yeah, good work there by Vernon Adams getting to two, th two and a half yards something. They ran four hitches across the board there, and there was there was nothing. I mean, the, the, I don't, there must have been no reads by any receivers or anything. That was called all hitch play, and it was Hamilton had the perfect coverage for that. It was it was really really locked down. Second and seven. Montreal on about their 21. Adams Jr. back to pass, completes it past the 30. That will be enough for a first down. B.J. Cunningham makes the catch. So the Alouettes starting to move the ball. Minute eight, seven, six remaining in the third quarter. Tiger Cats with that three-point lead. Montreal now on their own 33. Starting from the far hash, three receivers to the near side, stand back, Cover zero. right beside Adams Jr. And it's Jake Winicky. He gets to the outside. He's past the 40 to the 41, and he's forced out of bounds there by Ciante Evans and Tunde Adelike. Showed it late. Uh, Tunde came down from the free safety position high in the middle of the field, sort of your standard free, uh, free safety position, but he came down very, very late to cover the third receiver to the right, and it was true cover zero, and that was a perfect play call there by the Alouettes. Really quick throw, getting that number three receiver out on a little swing pass to the far right side of the field for Vernon Adams. Uh, great call. I mean, that's a great first down for the Alouettes. You have to hand it to them. That was a fantastic answer to cover zero. They're calling it second and one, but it's a long one. Here's our three receiver set, RJ. Three, three receivers for the Alouettes. And the handoff goes to William Stanback. And the Tiger Cats, they stop him. I don't think he got to that first down. I don't think so. Eddie Wilson right there. Great job by the defensive line of the Tiger Cats. And unfortunately, that's going to end the quarter. We'll have one more play to end it, I should say, but it's third down. Won't be much of a chance for. Yeah, they might have lost a little bit there, too, Luke. Maybe a few it inches. Looks like it, yeah. So now it would be third and two. Hamilton great defense. stop there yeah wow against the rush defense uh, against the Montreal rush the defense has been great 35 rush yards for Montreal wow and stand back came in is the second leading rusher averaging 97 yards per game so Joseph Zima back to punt standing on his own 25 yard line near hash ball is caught at the 30 and just across the 40, maybe to the 43, it was David Ungerer this time taking that punt. So through three quarters, it's the Tiger Cats continuing to lead Montreal 13 to 10. First time Tiger Cats have led through three quarters. You're listening to Hamilton Tiger Cats football across the Tiger Cats audio network. Welcome back to Montreal. Fourth quarter, Dane Evans. Back to pass and looking for Brandon Banks, and he was going mm. pretty deep too, but just a little too far ahead of Banks. I think Dane's gonna, he's gonna be thinking about that one. Uh, that, that I think should have been a Brandon Banks touchdown to start off the fourth quarter. And I think it looked to me like that was just a missed throw. Hamilton on their own 43, now second and 10. Lots of time for Evans. He knows that time is disappearing and it's gone. He is brought down. Mm. Another sack, Mike Wakefield. He's been there a couple of times, and that'll be uh, another loss for the Tiger Cats. And that's a quick two and out. You take a look at it right now. There's a quarter left to play, and this it is very much so an attainable win by either team right now. Time of possession is close. First downs are close. Offensive production, you know, reasonably 
close. Nobody's Nobody has stolen this game yet. That would have been a big drive to start off the fourth quarter there by the Ticats. The score is close. Hamilton leads by three. Now punting early in the fourth quarter. Joel Whitford standing on his own 20. Here's the snap and the punt. Pretty good punt. Mario Alford will field it just inside his 30. He's up past the 40 and no room there. He'll get it up to about the 43 and Hamilton good coverage forced him out of bounds. Yep, the crowd didn't like that. It was a, it, it did have an appearance of a late hit, but it was just the the finish of what was a gang tackle uh, by the Tie Cats there. They, the Tie Cats have crossed the field with Whitford a few times tonight on that on punting in the CFL. Classically, you have such a wide field, you're gonna you're gonna punt down the hash that you're on. I think with that sort of unique kicking style that Whitford has, I think that they've crossed the field to the wide side a few times. Good coverage there by the Cats on that. Vernon Adams Jr., he's calling the signals in the shotgun. He's 13 for 23, 138 yards and a touchdown. Hands off to Stanback, and that was work every step, but he got it across the 45 up to about the 47. Yep, good first down production there. Second, it looks like five is going to be for the Alouettes. You can play with that all night as an offense. Second and five, you, you can deal with that. Second down, five yards. Montreal on the Hamilton on their own 47. And Got the it. pass, Got it's it. an interception. Frankie Williams, what a game for Williams. First interception of the year for the Tiger Catch. He's down to the <laughs> 20, working into the 15, right. and finally down at the 14-yard line of Montreal after the interception. The defense comes through for Hamilton again. Frankie Williams, unbelievable timing. This is the time in a game where the playmakers start changing the game, where your best guys start making an influence, and Frankie Williams is one of the best guys for the Ticats. And that's the second time he's been carrying the ball down deep into the, Mont into the Montreal territory. The first time, obviously, on special teams in the early on in the game, but Man, what a timely play. Vernon Adams is visibly upset with the decision he made on that, but not to take the credit away from the athletic break on the ball that Frankie Williams had. This is where you put the dagger in right here. There's a lot of football left. It's not done with a touchdown here, but this is where you start to take over. 12 minutes to go, fourth quarter. Hamilton leading by three, starting at the 14 of Montreal. Dane Evans, it's a quarterback keeper. He's down to the 10, and at the six-yard line, he's forced out of bounds. Yep, called run to the right. I like it. Dane can settle down a little bit and just take off on a run. He's been pressured a lot. We've had five, six sacks, something like that at this point, which has been a problem in, in all three games for the Ticats so far. They're lining up quick here. Second and two, Dane Evans, he'll hand off. Sean Thomas Erlington launches over the pile of players ahead of him, and he'll take it down to about the two, and that should be first and goal. First uh, down, yes, first and goal. There, that's Sean Thomas Erlington. You see what I mean? He gets, he all of a sudden leaps through for extra three yards. It's very, he's got a great style to his run game about that, where he just refuses to get tackled at the point of impact. This needs to be seven points here for the Ticats. On the Montreal two, near hash mark. Dane Evans, he's got Thomas Erlington to his right, two receivers to the right, just one out to the left. Here's the handoff to Thomas Erlington, and that didn't fool Montreal. They were on it quick, and a few of them got in there, but it was Monshadrick Hunter, the first to get to Sean Thomas Erlington, and this will be a loss of one. Yeah, you can see that kind of coming before the snap of the ball. The Hunter, the field half for the Alouettes, kind of had a clear picture and a clear race to Erlington right as he got the ball. Erlington actually did a great job of not getting tackled for what could have been probably a two or three yard loss. It looks like they have their five receiver set back in the game now for the Ticats. They're on the Montreal three. Pushed back a yard after that great defensive play by Montreal. So second and goal on the Montreal three-yard line. The pass Nico. to Nico Kalinich. He reaches over, yeah. and it's a touchdown, Tiger Cats. 
Kalinic. <laughs> Able to get it across the goal line, and this is a big play for the Ticats. Really athletic play there by a big tight end. Dane threw a spear right to his back shoulder, and he caught it as he was getting tackled, put the ball across the goal line. That was a crafty little snap. Did you see that? They, the the Ticats did a sort of ghost snap. They all run towards the line of scrimmage and stopped as if they were going to reset, but immediately just took a quick pause and, and fired the playoff. Very, very interesting and a timely uh, uh, sort, of, sort of hesitation snap. Really like that call. Those are the first points of the second half this season for the Tiger Cats. So many firsts. Michael Damagala in there for the extra point, and it's good. Hamilton, 20, Montreal, 10. A big touchdown drive after a Frankie Williams interception. Ten-point lead, Tiger Cats. Welcome back to Montreal. A good game so far into the fourth quarter for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Nico Kalinic, the touchdown, is second reception of the year. He's been targeted twice, and he's caught both. And this led to the first points of the second half for Hamilton. They lead 20 to 10. Under 10 minutes to go, fourth quarter. Tough place to play. Montreal in their home opener. They're at one and one, and Mario Alford will bring this kickoff back to the 28-yard line of Montreal. Great play there by Nick Cross, who was the outside man on the coverage and kind of set up like it was looking like, like it might be a big Montreal return. He made a stout tackle there on his own in the open. The defense has been excellent for Hamilton in this game, Montreal came in, is really a double threat with the passing and running. The running game has been neutralized by the Hamilton defense. A great interception by Frankie Williams. First interception of the year for the Tiger Cats. And it seems when Frankie makes a play, it turns into points for the Tiger Cats, at least tonight. Isn't that something? Yeah, really. I mean, he's just been, he's just been a dynamite. In the, in the return game, though he also he actually he did miss a few drives for for that long return early in the game. Looked like he got banged up, but when he touches the ball, man, we, we, it, it, it has led to scoring opportunities for the Tie Cats. So turnovers was a big topic of the bye week for the Hamilton Tiger Cats, and when they got back to practice and they get the first turnover of this game, and it turns into points. Turnovers and explosive plays. That's Tommy Condell, the offensive coordinator for the Ticats. That's his toxic ratio, is your combination of explosive plays and the turnover ratio. This game been very, very even throughout, and, and one, one tilt of the scale, that one turnover, and in a very costly field, field area for the Alouettes, it, 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 just huge. I mean, Frankie Williams has to be, as right now, the Ticats uh, player of the night, I think, right? Yeah, he's had the golden touch for sure. Yeah. Turned it into a two-possession game. Dane Evans, he's come in his first start for the Tiger Cats this year, and he has not thrown more than two straight incompletions, so he's been extremely consistent. So Montreal starting from their own 28-yard line. It's Stanback, and he will get it up past the 30, almost to the 35, so a gain of maybe six on that initial rush. Good call there by the Alouettes, too. Just a, a draw right up the middle. Ticats had, a, had a, 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 a zone pass cover defense, wide open underneath coverage. Montreal in the hurry up. Down by 10 on their own 35, second and three. Adams Jr. back to pass, and it's behind Jake Winicky at the 40, and he can't come up with it. Cam Kelly in coverage, and it's incomplete. And Montreal, they're going to have to punt again. He had the body position on the Ticats Kelly running across the field, but that, that ball wasn't exactly on target, and that is a tough throw to make to step up in the pocket and put it out on the flat accurately, but that could have easily been a 10-yard gain for the Alouettes with a, with a better thrown ball by Vernon Adams. Eight minutes, 40 seconds to go in the fourth quarter. Hamilton leading by 10, Montreal, Joseph Zima punting. 
from his own 25 yard line. This will be caught at the 30. And it's Frankie Williams bringing it to the Hamilton 45 on that return. Another cross cross field punt from the Alouettes this time. Pretty good kick too, and, 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 and a fair return from Frankie Williams getting probably 10 or 12 yards after the after fielding the catch. Dane Evans getting set to go to work. He's 13 for 19, 169 yards and a couple of touchdowns in this game. Tiger Cats would like to eat some time off this clock. They're starting on their own 44. Dane Evans rolls to his right. He's under pressure, gets rid of the football, and he's just throwing that one away. Stephen Dunbar Jr., the closest receiver, but the pass was way out of bounds. That was a called throw it to Dunbar on this play type of type of play call there. They had four receivers uh, in motion to the boundary side of Dane Evans' left, and Dunbar had a deep, what looked to me like a post comeback and it kind of got muddled, muddled up with the cornerback there. Sometimes on a double move, you beat somebody so bad on that first move that they're in your way when you try your when you go back to, to finish your route. That's exactly what happened to Dunbar there, and Dane kind of had really nothing to do there. Only a CFL All-Star would know that. <laughs> Evans back to pass, and he throws a hard pass to Tim White, who takes it up to the 50. And that's not going to get the first down, so Hamilton not able to take much time off the clock, maybe about a minute, a little over that, but they're going to have to punt again, and Montreal will get the football back. Tiger Cats leading 20 to 10. Just over seven minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Tiger Cats. Hitting double digits for the first time, first interception, scoring points in the second half for the first time. So a lot of rights have happened for the Tiger Cats tonight. Joel Whitford steps up to his own 40. Mario Alford almost back to his 10, about the 12-yard line. He catches the punt, trying to find open space, but nothing there. Hamilton downfield the special teams right there to stop Alford at about the 15 16 yard line of Montreal in Montreal six minutes and 50 seconds remain in the fourth quarter Montreal starting from their own 16 A little dump off here Adams to stand back and he will get not very much maybe a yard Great tackle by Kelly there. Dropped into zone zone coverage. Three double cut. Defense is backing up and Adams dumped it off, but great, great pursuit by Kelly, the Sam linebacker. So now Montreal on their own 18. Big second down. It's second down and eight. Three receivers on the near side of the field. That's to the left of Vernon Adams Jr. as Montreal goes right to left. Adams Jr. had to pull that ball down. He's going to hang on to it, trying to get to the outside, and he's out of bounds. They're going to mark it at about the 28. And he gets the first down. That's important for Montreal. This defense could use a stop. Yeah, you're guaranteed a couple of those out of Vernon Adams. This is just great coverage and a strong rush from the Ticats, but he's got a little wiggle on the sidelines. Yeah, I actually think that was a pretty generous spot. We just got another look at it. That was very generous. Ball on the Montreal 28. Just under six minutes to go, fourth quarter. Montreal down by 10. It's a two-possession game. Vernon Adams Jr., oh, what a move that was. He was under pressure. And now he throws deep, and it's knocked away. There's Roll. Jamal Roll knocks that away. That was important because that would have been inside the 35-yard line of the tie catch. Yeah. It looks like in hindsight, he felt like he might have had a chance to make a play on the ball. But just great defense and, and, a, and a great way to avoid a pass interference. And for a second there in that route, he was trailing the receiver. Very classic place for a DB to over, over adjust and, and draw and get a penalty called. 
Second and 10, Montreal on their own 28, far hash mark. Adams Jr. stays in the pocket. It's complete up the middle to Jake Winicky. He's been the favorite second down target of Adams Jr. this year, and he'll bring that across the 45 up to the 46, and that will be another first down for Montreal. Seen a couple key first downs from Winicky for, for Montreal tonight. It's always frustrating as a game progresses where you see the same guy doing the same thing, uh, you know, as the as the quarters progress. That's Winicky tonight. Hand off now this time to Stan Bank. He battles through the initial tackle and drags the ball across midfield. It'll be about a yard short of a first down, maybe two yards short. Thus far, one of the more productive drives for Montreal, and they're getting a little bit of momentum here at as the game as we close in towards a three-minute warning. Just over four minutes to go. Another handoff to Stanback. There's a little bit of a hole there, and he's able to take it five or six, but it's still plenty to move the sticks again. Another first down, Montreal. Alouettes at the Hamilton 50 now. Down by 10. Not a lot of time to go. Getting close to that three minute warning. Adams Jr. stays in the pocket again, going deep. And the ball is knocked away. There's a flag. Siante Evans was complaining. It looked like almost as soon as that ball was thrown. Juan Bray was the intended target. That flag will be pivotal on who's getting the penalty. Both sides are making a case for it. Hard to tell from where we're watching. I don't know what this is going to be. And there's still some discussion about it. There we go. This is an important part of the game and a big flag. Face mask, Montreal number four. That penalty will be applied at the end of the play. It's going to be second down. Wow. So. Huge. huge. We, I, was, I was expecting the defensive PI. Yeah, sure enough, we're getting another look at it. That is, he's really tugging on Siante Evans' face mask way down the field making a play on this ball. And Siante Evans yeah. <laughs> still was able to get a hand on it and knock it away. That's it was an impressive defensive play. Very <laughs> Really good. Staying with it, but you could see Siante Evans was complaining almost yeah. immediately when that ball was thrown. Well, so, you assume, right? <laughs> yeah, when we got another look at it, it was clear why. So now Montreal in their own 45 at second and 25. Tough for Montreal. Adams Jr. He'll throw. Mm. It's up to midfield. And brought down just outside the Hamilton 50 is Quan Bray. And it won't be enough for a first down, and it looks like it would be a really tough field goal. Gorgeous night for football in Montreal at Percival Molson Memorial Stadium. Tiger Cats leading the Alouettes 20 to 10, just under three minutes to go, and it is third down, and Montreal going for it. Third and 11. It's a two possession game, and it's shoveled ahead to stand back. It's incomplete. So the Alouettes are going to turn this over on downs and the Tiger Cats getting ever closer to the first win of the season. Julian Hauser, what a great, great tackle. And Vernon Adams was very close to making something really special happen and flicking that ball out to, Stam to Stamkos as he was going down. Just not enough. Really strong, strong rush by the Tiger Cats there. I think you could have made an argument that the Alouettes would pin that, try to pin that deep. Third yeah. and 12 is no easy play, but it's, it's uh, every coach is going to call that one different. You have the three-minute warning to think about it. It didn't work for Montreal. Hamilton on first down. It's a handoff to Sean Thomas Erlington, and he'll maybe get two or three yards out of that. Not very much. This is, a t this is not an easy time to call offensive plays either for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. There's a lot of clock left. You, you, there's a tendency to be somewhat conservative that you have the lead, but really you still are in need of offensive production. And, and a huge reason for that is you just need time of possession, right? You gotta, you gotta take 
take time off of the clock. And in the CFL, in, in, you're in the tie cat shoes right now. It just lasts forever. I'm telling you, these three minutes will refuse to go away. Tiger catch at midfield. Second and three. A quick pass to Stephen Dunbar Jr. He started it for Hamilton. And now in the fourth quarter comes up with a big second down catch. And that will keep Hamilton in possession of the football. Brandon Banks came across on a little fake, fake uh, speed around, which he's which he's gotten twice tonight. And Dane put a foot in the ground and threw a dart, just a little eight-yard pass. Really, really nice play, perfectly timed. That was an important down for the Tiger Cats if they hope to seal this victory. Now there's two minutes on the clock. Hamilton stepping up to the ball. It's on the Montreal 48. They're over midfield. Dane Evans takes the snap. It's a handoff. No, he's. Holding it, it's a quarterback keep. It even fooled me it was so good. It got inside Beautiful. the 40-yard line, and that'll be close to a first down. Well, Tommy Condell doesn't think it's as difficult as I do to call plays right now. That, that was two <laughs> really, really nicely, nicely timed plays. Called run for Dane around the end. Se second and three now, really comfortable position. Getting close to field goal range, though, we, though the Ticats have struggled. Uh, with two missing two field goals tonight in the third quarter. One more first down, you think you could push this probably to a field goal. Under two minutes to go. Hamilton on the Montreal 40-yard line. Calling it second and two. Hamilton in the huddle. Dane Evans calling the play. Rushing game much better for Hamilton tonight. 104 yards on the ground. Another handoff, and this is a big gain. It's Sean Thomas Erlington, and that'll be another first down for the Tiger Cats. Great run and great finish there by Erlington. Free safety Cranston for Montreal. Got a really nice shot there as Early finished that. Falling forward, getting the first down. Now onto the Montreal 30, definitely within field goal range. Tiger Cats leading 20 to 10. Minute and a half on the clock. Dane Evans in the shotgun. Thomas Erlington just to his right. Four receivers further to the right. It's a handoff to Thomas Erlington. <laughs> oh, he leaped the defender, and he's still going inside the 10, the 5. Uh. Forced out of bounds. <laughs> what a run by Sean Thomas Erlington. He's a hurdler. Oh, my goodness. He's going to get himself on the... TSN roll for the for a couple weeks now. We're getting another look at it here. <laughs> Great that is leap amazing. over top by Erlington. That was awesome. Greg Reed Jr. was going for the tackle and right over top goes He's Thomas five nine, Erlington. RJ, he's only five nine. <laughs> <laughs> that is some kind of athlete. Cool. That and what great. a time to do it. Yep. Down to the five. First and goal. Another handoff to yeah, Sean Thomas him. Erlington, and it's a touchdown, Tiger Cats! Sean Thomas Erlington, it's fitting that he's the one to cap off this drive with a big touchdown, and the Tiger Cats are up 26 to 10 with a convert coming. He's probably got 50 people at this game. He's in his home home uh, city. What a great, uh, what a great play, and a great drive by the Tiger Cats. The running game was fairly absent in the first two games for the Tiger Cats. It is back. And what a time and what a display Sean Thomas Erlington put on that drive. He had 10 carries for 73 yards tonight. And that drive hurdling Gregory Jr. and then taking it into the end zone, very impressive. And the convert from Michael Damagala is good. So it's 27 to 10 for Hamilton with a minute and 11 on the clock. So this is going to be the. No, there is a penalty here. And it's on Montreal. Assessed on the kick. And that puts it to 17, a 17 point spread, uh, a three point game. That was just an unbelievable drive there. That's that's your three-minute drive 
You got the lead. You want to kill the clock, stay in bounds, keep the ball in your hands. That was just amazing. Tiger Cats, 27-10, they lead. Looking for that first win. Looks like they're going to get it. Post-game guests coming up with Louis B. and Andy Fantuz on the post-game show. It's Coach O, Dane Evans, Bakari Grant, only on Ticats.ca. Louis and Andy standing by. Unbelievable turnaround for Hamilton in the rushing game on both sides of the ball. They struggled for stopping the run in the first two week, first two games. They've only let up 68 yards rushing and they've gained 144 on the ground. Hamilton will kick this off. It's a roller down to Alford. Got some blocking help ahead of him, but he's running out of room at that far sideline, and the Tiger Cats are able to bring him down. There is a flag. Minute and two seconds left on the clock. Tiger Cats got off to the great start. 10-0 lead after the first quarter. It was 13-10 at the half. First time the Tiger Cats had led at halftime. Got their first interception of the year, Frankie Williams, and that led to points. So much talk about the Tiger Cats and the turnovers in the first two games while well, they get a pivotal turnover in this game that led to another Bring touchdown. Nico Kalinic scoring that touchdown. Hamilton, number 24, that penalty is declined. First down, Montreal. Penalty yeah, declined, up. interesting. Matt Schiltz comes in the game, quarterback for the Alouettes. With a minute two on the clock. Montreal down by 17. Interesting start for the Alouettes. Won their first game. Just got stopped at the goal line last week against Calgary. And now they're going to lose at home. This is the first East Division versus East Division matchup of the season in the CFL. And it will be the only one this week as well. But it's very important to win those divisional games. And it looks like the Tiger Cats are going to do that. And they're right back in the mix with that one victory. Absolutely. It count, counts for two when you are when you beat a divisional opponent. Really great way to turn it around for the Ticats. And that is Schultz trying to run the ball. The Tiger Cats bring him down. Now there's 48 seconds on the clock. The last win for the Tiger Cats was in the 2019 East Final against Edmonton. You were there, Luke, 650 days ago. <laughs> <laughs> that is something. Here's Jeshrun Antwi out of the University of Calgary. Uh, running back takes the pass and he'll bring it just across the 40. Now 35 seconds to go in the game. Tiger Cats fixed a lot of things in this one. They didn't have double digit points, didn't have an interception, didn't have a field goal, hadn't led at the half. Dane Evans, excellent, 15 to 22, 183 yards, two touchdowns, a pass attempt by Schultz, and more great defense. Jamal Roll Jamal there Roll. again. He's had a few good defensive plays, he and has. it's an incomplete pass. Just a great scenario now for the Tiger Cats. They've got a divisional win. They've got the monkey off their back of having a rough start to the season. And now they're coming off a bye week for this game, and now they also have a long week of prep before the Labor Day Classic, which is well over a week away from now. Really couldn't be better going into their home, op home opener uh, against the Toronto Argonauts. Dane Evans coming on the field with 23 seconds to go. Dane Evans will be one of the guests. Post game with Louis B and Andy Fantuz. Coach O will also be a guest, and Bakari Grant will break things down. Stephen Dunbar Jr. in his first CFL game had six receptions, 95 yards. Looks like he's a nice addition to this Hamilton offense. Dane Evans takes a knee, and that will run the clock down a little further. And they'll have to take one more knee, and this is one thing they do in practice. At the end, they get in the win formation. Best play in football, Coach O says. <laughs> <laughs> He's right. Nothing better than a victory. It's a great feeling to be on uh, to be on this uh, in this personnel group. And there it is. Hamilton has its first win of the season, and they go on the road 
in Montreal to get it. 27 to 10, they beat the Alouettes and so many things that weren't going right in the first two games they corrected and went right tonight. This is a Hamilton Tiger Cats team that a lot of fans thought they were going to see right from the beginning, but it looks like they're here now. Yep, they found it a little bit tonight and there's still some things to correct. There was a lot of sacks, especially in the first half tonight, but this was going to be a very tough game for them to win and they came out strong. They got it back together when things went awry. We had some big plays by some of the best players on the team. Frankie Williams had an unbelievable night. Really just fantastic to, to see a win here. You got to say it would be tough to go 0-3 into the Labor Day Classic and they handled business tonight in a big way. Well, you're right, Luke. A 14-game season, you lose three games. That's over 20% of the season gone. So it's a huge win right back in the mix. Tied for second place in the East Division. And going to have a... <laughs> don't, don't you love to see if it's well, second, or one and two, and you're tied. For, I love that. You could also say tied for last, uh, yeah, but it sounds well, better hey, come tied on. for yeah, second. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but now there's going to be a lot of home games. Five of their next seven are at home, and one of those road games is in Toronto, so that's a, a very close trip. So the schedule favoring the Tiger Cats a little bit more. They got a lead at the half. They got an interception. Frankie Williams, some huge plays. Stephen Dunbar Jr. was terrific. And Dane Evans comes in as the quarterback and was very, very good, consistent, and does what he does well and wins. Hamilton victorious tonight in Montreal, 27 to 10. Post-game coverage is coming up next for Luke Tasker. I'm R.J. Broadhead. Thanks for listening to Hamilton Tiger Cats football on the Tiger Cats Audio Network.